Hi everyone, my name is Mark, and today we're going to take a look at another horrible case with you. On the night of June 23, 1993, the officers closest to a crime scene had to undertake the unsanitary task of digging through trash. They had a penis to find, and it belonged to John Bobbitt. Lorena, his wife, had sliced it off while he was sleeping. It's been 31 years. John and Lorena are alive and well, and their story remains unforgettable. John and Lorena Bobbitt were a former American couple whose story kept the world shocked and amazed at the audacity of humans when pushed to the extreme. John Wayne Bobbitt married Lorena Gallo on June 18, 1989. John was born in New York and raised in Niagara Falls. Unfortunately, his father was out of the picture and he was taken away from his mother, who was a drug addict, at the tender age of three. He had two brothers, and with them he went to live with his aunt and uncle. John stated that he grew up in a large family, and his aunt and uncle raised them to be religious. The family went to church every Sunday, and John joined the party gladly. When John came of age, he enlisted in the Marines since many of his friends were doing the same. For John, there was no sense in being alone while all his friends were gone, so he found himself a new family, the U.S. Marines. On the other hand, Lorena was born in Ecuador in 1969 but raised in Venezuela. Undoubtedly, she started migrating early in life. As Lorena recounted in her Amazon documentary, she had watched a lot of American television as a child, and it sold her the American dream. Her dreams came true when she migrated to America on a student visa. Lorena enrolled and studied at Northern Virginia Community College. John met Lorena at a Marine Corps officer's ball in 1988 while still serving in the Marine Corps. It does not matter if you have banished love at first sight into the pages of cheesy romance books. It happened for John and Lorena. They were attracted to each other, and the chemistry was sublime. John described her as shy and didn't speak much English, but the chemistry was enough to start something. So that was what they did. They started dating each other. In nine months, they were married. John Bobbitt married Lorena on June 18, 1989. According to an interview with 2020, the couple had different versions of how they got engaged. John claimed Lorena proposed to him in the presence of her mother. Lorena claimed the reverse was the case. Their wedding was a small one and officiated by a justice of peace. John adds that love or silly affection for one another had not rushed their wedding. They married quickly because Lorena's student visa would soon expire and she wanted to remain in America. It was her lifelong dream to live in America anyway, and who was John to deny her of such? This was one of the varying instances of their stories. According to Lorena, the abuse started right away after they got married. John has a contrary story. In his account, he did not harm, rape, or forcefully lay his hands on Lorena. He stuck to his story every time he was asked, and it was hard to pinpoint what was going on with the couple. John added that sometimes, when she started fighting him, he restrained her. He maintained his innocence and absolved himself of the assault claim made by Lorena with his testimony. Contrary to John's story, Lorena shared a version of her husband's assault. One month after their wedding, the couple were in a car when John started driving recklessly. Lorena was afraid for her life. Who wouldn't be? In her fear, she asked him to stop, placing her hands on the steering wheel. She intervened in a bid to straighten their route. It was at that moment that John, according to allegations levied against him, punched her for the first time. On June 22, 1993, John had suggested a divorce to Lorena, which upset her. Since she was still scared of him, she went to the police for help. The trip was in hopes of getting a protective order against John. The process took about three hours, but Lorena did not want to wait that long, so she left before she completed it. 
In the early hours of that evening, John went out drinking with his friend who had come to stay with him. When he returned home, he raped Lorena before he fell asleep. When he awoke, John said he had no memory or recall of what had transpired. He did not remember sex taking place between Lorena and himself, and the closest thing to a physical contact he vaguely remembered was petting, and that was it. On June 23, 1993, Lorena came home from work like any other day. John came home that night and raped her. It seemed the act was more customary than it was a one-time event. Afterwards, Lorena walked into the kitchen for a cup of water. There among the kitchen utensils was the knife that could give her breathing space from the instrument of torture her husband used to inflict pain on her. Lorena grabbed an 8-inch Jinsu carving knife she saw on the kitchen counter and walked into the bedroom with it. Lorena pulled back the sheets and severed John's member. Shortly after, Lorena left the apartment, got into a car, and drove away with the severed appendage in one of her hands. As she drove on, navigating the road with one hand on the wheel became too much work as the other hand held a severed member. She soon threw the shaft out of a window into a roadside field on Maplewood Drive. She drove around, not knowing what to do or whom to call. Eventually, she stopped and dialed 911, reporting what had happened and giving directions to where they could find her husband's missing appendage. The officers got there and got to work. After an exhaustive search, they did find John's missing appendage, washed it with antiseptic, and kept it in an icebox. Afterwards, paramedics drove him to a hospital. The surgeons reattached it in a surgical operation that took almost 10 hours. The incident happened in the early hours of 1993, around 4 a.m. By nightfall, Lorena had been arrested by the police and charged with the crime of malicious wounding. She risked spending up to 20 years in prison if found guilty. When Lorena Bobbitt was arrested, she reportedly told the police he always has an orgasm, and he doesn't wait for me ever to have an orgasm. He's selfish. The conversation ensued with Detective Peter Wentz and was recorded on a tape recorder. Mary Grace O'Brien, the assistant Commonwealth attorney of Prince William County, who was prosecuting Lorena, read the recording transcript that was read at trial. Many things about the couple's relationship came to limelight during the trial. Their home was somewhat volatile and had not been a happy place for Lorena. The Bobbits revealed details of the event that led to the eventual act. Lorena accused John of abusing her sexually, physically, and emotionally. In addition to that, he flaunted his infidelity in her face and even forced her to abort a pregnancy. An expert witness had testified that John's threat imprisoned Lorena. I will find you, whether we are divorced or separated. Wherever I find you, I will have sex with you whenever I want to. The defense lawyer, Blair D. Howard, maintained that Lorena had acted in self-defense, coupled with temporary insanity. He stated that it was John's behavior and constant harassment that led to Lorena's snapping. She had been suffering from clinical depression. In addition to a truckload of post-traumatic stress disorder in the mix, one would likely have a mentally unstable person in their hands. The defense argued that John's perpetual abuse of his wife had caused everything. John denied all the allegations of abuse and harassment, but when Howard, the defense lawyer, cross-examined him, he found it hard to be consistent, conflicting his statement with known facts. In the course of the questioning, he weakened the prosecutor's case. In Lorena's testimony, there had been other rapes and physical battering on many occasions before the evening of the incident. She revealed that their finances were unstable, and John had not only stolen her earnings, but also spent the proceeds. Other witnesses corroborated Lorena's stories and claimed they had seen cuts and bruises on her. John's friends came forward to testify that John told them how he controlled her, forcefully had sex with her, and dominated her. The prosecution and the defense attorneys agreed that John definitely had a history of abusing his wife, and the repeated acts built up to the assault over time. 
The expert witnesses from both ends concluded that Lorena had been constantly battered and abused, and by 1993, she lived in fear of John. Before Lorena's trial, John was on trial from the 8th to the 10th of November 1993. On the 11th of November 1993, a jury of nine women and three men found him not guilty of marital assault. John Bobbitt gave different variations of what happened between midnight of June 22nd and the early morning of June 23rd, 1993. In one account, he said they had not had sex, and even though Lorena had initiated sex, he was too tired to engage in it. In another account, he claimed that they had had sex, but he had slept through the whole act. The sex was, however, consensual, not a rape. After seven long hours of deliberation, the jury found Lorena to be the most credible. She was found not guilty by reason of temporary insanity. On the 24th of January, 1994, Lorena was admitted into a psychiatric ward for 45 days. It was a 45-day evaluation period at the Central State Hospital in Petersburg. On March 1, 1994, she was released after being considered not a threat to herself or the society. In 1995, John and Lorena Bobbitt finalized their divorce. A series of events led to what happened between Lorena and John Bobbitt. Not taking them into account might seem like a biased way of reporting what went down. As he was the victim, John Bobbitt's severed penis gained all the attention and the sensation it could get. Not just that, due to what had happened, some feminists frowned on what Lorena had done as they feared it might have far-reaching consequences. But that would be a one-sided story. John was discharged from the Marines in 1991 and no longer had a steady paycheck. Ask anybody and they will agree that losing a credible and steady source of income might slow things down in any family. He had trouble finding or keeping a job. The role of the sole household provider soon fell on Lorena. At this time, Lorena worked as a nanny in the Virginia area and as a manicurist in a beauty salon. Lorena soon developed a close relationship with the woman who owned the salon, Jenna Bisuti. In October 1991, Lorena started to embezzle Basuti's money. She stole about $7,000, and when Basuti realized the embezzlement, she ordered Lorena to repay the stolen money with interest. Lorena could keep her job at the salon, but looked elsewhere for her newfound hobby of theft. She stole a few dresses from Nordstrom, and when she got caught, she was punished with community service. In the same year, Lorena had an abortion, and they had different stories about what happened again. According to Lorena, she was excited to start a family, but John did not receive the news with the same enthusiasm Lorena exhibited. She adds that John did not think he could care for the baby, and suggested leaving Lorena if she kept and had the child. The fear of raising a child alone led Lorena to the choice of an abortion, and she insisted that John was the reason she had it. John's story was different, as he recounted that Lorena had agreed that the time was not right for the couple to have a baby. They both decided on the abortion together. After the incident, John remained broke. To generate money, he tried to form a band called The Severed Parts to pay his mounting legal and medical bills. The band was not a success, and it failed to generate money. In September 1994, John appeared in an adult film, John Wayne Bobbitt Uncut. After the trial, John Bobbitt moved to Las Vegas, where he met Ron Jeremy. In an interview he had with Vanity Fair, John opened up about the adult film. A porno seemed like the best way to show my penis worked, only it wasn't all the way healed yet. I realize now that that was the point. The movie had not yet premiered when charges were brought against John by his new girlfriend, Christina Elliott. He was found guilty of misdemeanor and domestic battery charges. He served 12 days out of the 15-day sentence a judge handed him. John divorced Lorena in 1995, and in 1996, he took another role in an adult film. One would wonder what the endgame was, 
and why his phallus needed to grace screens. He had a reason that was at least reasonable to him. Besides the financial part, John had said yes to an offer from Howard Stern to undergo a reconstructive plastic surgery which would see the penis further enlarged. The second porno was titled Franken Penis and was released in 1996. In 1999, John had accumulated a lot of legal issues for himself, ranging from assault to battery. He pleaded guilty to a charge of felony with attempted grand larceny after stealing $140,000 worth of clothing in Nevada. In the same year, a court found him guilty of harassing an ex-girlfriend named Desiree A. Luz. In 2002, he was charged afresh with battering his third wife, Joanna Ferrell. He was found not guilty and was acquitted. Lorena resorted to keeping a low profile after the trial. To achieve that, she reverted to the use of her maiden name, Gallo. In October 1996, she visited Ecuador, the place of her birth, and had an official dinner with the current president, Abdallah Bukharam. The unlikely couple then baptized a child together as a godfather and a godmother. Their relationship sparked controversy in the media. The president was even criticized for having dinner with Lorena. In 1997, Lorena was in the news again after she was charged with assault against her mother. Reports had it that she punched the woman, Elvia Gallo, while they watched television. Lorena was soon acquitted of the charge and her mother remained with her. Lorena Gallo returned to the community college and found Dave Bellinger. The two became lovers in the late 90s and have since been together. Though they are unmarried, they have one daughter named Olivier together. Their decision to stay unmarried is speculated to be fear for marriages on Lorena's part, as her first marriage had not worked. In 2007, Lorena Gallo started a foundation aimed at helping women who were in abusive relationships. Her foundation was called Lorena's Red Wagon Foundation, a nonprofit organization that helps survivors of domestic abuse. Lorena and John were never seen together in public, at least not until 2009 when they made their first and only joint television appearance. All through their trial, before, during, and after, the couple took interviews but separately, never together. That changed in 2009 when The Insider brought them together. In the interview, Lorena told John, You drove me crazy. You drove me insane. No woman should go through what I went through. In 2019, a docu-series titled Lorena premiered on Amazon and reignited conversations around the incident involving Lorena Bobbitt, her claims of domestic abuse and marital rape. Back in the 1990s, the Bobbitts were the talk of the time and the opening line for every comedian in the country. It definitely would have a different reaction today. In an interview with Olivia B. Waxman, Lorena Gallo opens up about how she felt about her case in the media reports. She said, It was sad because they were more concerned about ratings than anything. They were more concerned about his penis instead of domestic violence. They missed the whole concept of domestic violence and abuse against women by a mile. She continued, This is a very important issue that's going on and you're more concerned about the man who lost his penis. The whole country was divided into women and men. Unfortunately, we're still in a patriarchal society. It's a man's world that hasn't changed much. She further lamented how the new generation knew nothing about the story and how it went down. She disclosed that there was a history that preceded what happened. She further spoke on how she guided the detectives and police officers to where she had dumped her former husband's member. According to her, her help in finding her ex-husband's member depicted that she was not vindictive and that the incident was not out of spite. She declared that if she had done it with bad intentions, she would have replied to them with unconcern. Aside from the TV show where they had met in 2009, very little is said by John Wayne Bobbitt about the incident. He admits he still harbors feelings towards Lorena, but they hardly see each other. I loved the woman she was, John said in an interview. 
With all indications, he had moved on from the incident, and even though the incident had made him famous and featured in two adult films, it seemed there was no staying out of trouble for John Bobbitt. While his former partner now has a foundation for women who are survivors of domestic abuse, Bobbitt, as of 2019, was reported as living in North Las Vegas and searching for treasures hidden in the Rockies by Forrest Fenn, according to Vanity Fair. In the August 2018 issue of Vanity Fair, John stated he was paying his bills from the settlement he received from a car crash he suffered in 2014. He also told the magazine that he had a penile reduction surgery in 2016 in a bid to reverse the cosmetic work he had undergone in earlier years. John still maintains his innocence. According to what the New York Times reported, he said, Gallo was never abused. She was the abuser, and she cut off my penis because I was going to leave her. The story of Lorena and John Bobbitt happened at a time when patriarchy was still rife and marital rape was just starting to have laws against it in the 50 states of the United States. Lorena was inspired by her own story and the incident, yet she feels sad about the big picture which the sensationalist media of the time ensured people missed. In a way, John's genitals gained more popularity than the underlying condition that caused it to start with, which was domestic violence and abuse. From t-shirts to commercials, the term bobatize was everywhere. Today, her story may have taken a different turn. The media and general public would have addressed Lorena's part more than it was in 1994. There is no doubt that the system that empowers men because they have phallus is what Lorena Gallo wants to stop with her foundation, as she thinks women deserve to be heard and helped. Amy Chozik, in her interview with Lorena Gallo, described her as being straightforward and open. I know I'm still Lorena Bobbitt. That name, you know, it's significant here. Lorena says as Heather Sten of the New York Times reports, as Lorena drove Amy around in the neighborhood where it all happened, she admired what she had done for herself and how far she had come. She was quoted by Heather Sten saying, I'll put myself through the jokes and everything as long as I can shine a light on domestic violence and sexual assault and marital rape. She had no time to regret what she had done, the cutting off of her husband's penis. Amy asked her if she had regretted doing that and her response was, how can you regret something you didn't mean to do? Today, a woman like Lorena would have been celebrated for standing up for herself and being a voice for the voiceless. Regardless, in her gentle way, the way she inspires is as graceful. And her war, albeit unintentional, against domestic violence was one she subdued.